Mayor Jim Watson is seeking a third term uh, in the election on Monday. We're going to talk about the likelihood of that and whether or not there will be some pushback from some city councillors if Jim Watson is mayor for a third term. Steve, let's start with you. Uh, I don't think too many people are predicting anything but a Jim Watson victory on Monday. So uh, maybe just if, unless you feel strongly that Clive Doucette or someone else is going to upset Jim Watson, uh, what do you think this campaign has been about for Jim Watson? And what do you think the next four years will look like? Well, I think he's he's put forward uh, a platform that he brings stability to City Hall, that he has, uh, uh, you know, very pragmatic and practical plans for, for our city and not just for the inner urban core, but also the suburbs and the rural areas. Likely there will be some changes on the council. Um, there likely will be some voices that will, will challenge him. And, you know, this is not his first rodeo. I think he will uh, figure out about a means by which he will lead uh, a council. I've served on two councils where I had one under Larry where it was uh, quite a roller coaster and I had one under under Mayor Watson where it was much more predictable and uh, at the end of the day I think people preferred uh, less uh, smoke coming out of City Hall and focusing on getting some things done so while it may have been enter entertaining under, under Larry's uh, time um, uh, for the media in particular, uh, it created instability and concern in the community that we weren't focusing on the issues. And so, you know, you have to find a balance, obviously, yeah. there so that you have voices and that you, you accept dissent at, at council. Um, but I expect that, uh, you know, he will be, continue to be sort of the pragmatic mayor that, uh, that he is. Sue, so, uh, do you think it's uh, a question of whether some councillors will push back against Jim Watson or is it a question of whether some councillors will start at some point auditioning for his job on the expectation that he won't seek a fourth term? Will there be some councillors who will start to try to carve out more of a citywide profile in the next four years? I think you're going to see a bit of both. Um, the mayor has certainly made it clear in uh, several of these wards who his pick is. Um, I think that's absolutely his right. Uh, I find his tactics a bit underhanded, and uh, they don't sit well with me. His recent tweet calling uh, for voters not to vote for people who rock the boat, I find totally distasteful. Um, but on the other hand, so I mean, I think if some of those people, like, like a Matt Muirhead, who is a very independent thinker, he's not going to be kowtowing to the mayor. But yes, I think... People are going to presume this is last term, and I think there are going to be plenty of, I mean, the number of people who would like to be mayor around that council, you know, there's a lot of them. And, uh, yes, they're going to be gunning to show their leadership. So, um, you know, I, I had an interesting email from a guy, uh, I think it was after I criticized the mayor for his uh, suggestion that, you know, we should all get along, which in my, my mind means we should all agree with Mayor Watson. Saying, you know, it's interesting that the media criticized Larry, but, you know, Larry, for all his newness, actually let democracy just unfold. It was a bit ugly. I'll, I'll grant you that. And, yes, it did make great copy. But, um, you know, Mayor Watson criticizes people for debate at council or for asking too many questions. Um, so, yes, I think this is definitely going to be a different term, and I think that is... Part of the reason why Mayor Jim Watson, who admits to being a control freak, wants to get as many of his picks on council, which I, I hope doesn't happen. Okay. Jonathan, what do you think this mayoral race has been about, ultimately? Uh, it's been about Jim Watson keeping his head down. Um, he hasn't really been at the debate. Uh, the, a lot of the policy offerings he's had have been pretty meager. Um, he's basically run not to lose because uh, it really wasn't a huge challenge. You know, there was there was hope that Clive Doucette would really push him on some issues, and I don't think he really has. Um, the biggest issues we seem to be talking about in terms of Clive Doucette, whether or not they're his biggest issues, just the ones that have garnered, garnered the most attention, are regional rail, which is a bit of a distraction from the actual transit issues in the city. It's, it's maybe a good issue to bring up, but it's not the primary transit issues we have. And then weekly garbage pickup, and like, that's not coming back. People okay, are still talking about me. it. So, so we haven't had that sort of real, real like, you know, clash of ideas that we were hoping we were going to have. 
Um, he still is more of a challenger than we've really seen in the past four years. But the other thing that we're seeing is that Jim Watson is starting to realize, he's starting to, to, to sort of recalibrate some positions. You know, he's talking about, oh, well, actually, tax may have to go up to 3% or something. Whereas everybody's still talking about the 2% pledge from last time around. He He's realized that that has kind of starved the city of the funds they need for all those potholes that everybody's talking about. Um, he's also starting to talk about how, well, okay, we will fund supervised injection sites, whereas it's not that long ago that he was against them altogether. He's, he's, he's a smart politician. He's a good politician. He knows when he needs to pivot, and I think that's what he's been doing. And it's not even been the issues that people have been pressing him on. He's sort of seeing where it's going, where council is going, where our issues are going, and where he has to place himself to make sure he's on the right side. So you, you wanted to comment on the on Clive Doucette promising to restore weekly garbage collection? You know, I was so happy, although totally shocked, that Clive Doucette was coming into the race. Um, when Clive Doucette said he'd bring back weekly garbage pickup in the summer, I was, I mean, I don't want people to know how, how much I care about City Hall, but I was devastated because he knows that's just ridiculous. And he knows the people who want weekly garbage pickup aren't using their green bin and that goes against everything he believes in so that for me was a huge disappointment and uh, i have no idea who i'm casting my vote for on uh, monday but it yeah uh, it won't be for jim watson and i can't say i'm going to be able to vote for clive either so who does that leave yeah well that's a good question yeah i haven't seen your debate yet so i guess i'll have to let you know yeah uh, Steve, what do you think of Clive Doucette's campaign? Because I, I did, I, I, like Sue, I found it interesting that of all the people running for mayor, that Clive Doucette would be the person arguing to restore weekly garbage collection. No, as, as Sue says, it's, it's tremendously ironic that he would suggest that. Uh, I served on a council with Clive. Uh, he's entertaining. He's bright. Uh, he's probably better uh, as a professor at a university where he can uh, lecture and, and, and lecture in a passionate way. And I don't mean that uh, negatively. I just think he, some of his ideas are, uh, are very academic and that are not really grounded in a, in a reality. And he's, I'll give him credit, he's trying to get some ideas out there so that there is some debate, some discussion, some interest. Um, but he certainly, I don't think, has been challenged um, uh, on, on, on some of the ideas that he's brought forward. I think because the media um, uh, wants to give him, wants there to be uh, a race, and uh, it's just not coming about. His rail plan, for example, I mean, he has been uh, against a sprawl. Well, if we start to build rail lines out to Smith Falls and other regions outside of the city of Ottawa and on the Gatineau side, that will absolutely encourage sprawl. So. He, he's putting ideas on the table that that uh, that that have some logic to them, but I do think they run counter to what he really believes. That, as as, yeah. as Sue says, whether it be and waste management for me, or controlling so sprawl. Disappointing. Yeah, uh, Sue. Uh, who are just quickly? Who are some of the city councilors you think will want to, will be thinking about running for mayor in four years if the job comes open? Well, I mean, certainly we used to always talk about Mark Taylor. Whether he's taking a you know the four four years off so he can, you know, work hard in the ward or in the city. Uh, certainly, you know, we always used to talk about Toby Nussbaum, although uh, I I wonder whether he's just been laying back and will give it more this uh, term. Um, Tim Tierney, uh, people always thought that he wanted. Obviously, his situation has changed. Um, depending on the race, I would think Diane Deans would, uh, you know, she's not made a secret of wanting to do that. Um, you know, it will all just spend, depend on the landscape. I mean, yeah. I think Jan Hart is ready to, to get out, but if there wasn't a strong right-wing candidate, I wouldn't be shocked to see her do it. So, mm. Interesting. I'd probably, add, John, I'd probably add Steve Bled to that one as yes. well. I think. Uh, oh, sorry, yes. You definitely. think he'll run for mayor? I think it's a possibility. I yeah. mean, I, I, at the end of the day, we break down city council sometimes through uh, urban or sub, inside Greenbelt, outside Greenbelt, yeah. and rural. And uh, there is a tremendous number of people living in the suburban communities. Sure. So at some point, I'd like to think there will be a suburban mayor, this, a mayor that comes from the suburban right. part of the city. And Steve Blatt would have um, that qualification. Yeah, what about There was certainly Flurry? a time we would have uh, also said Steve Roche, but I guess we'll have to wait and mm -hmm. see uh, 
for his future head. Yeah, we'll see. You're, you've got your eyes on other yeah. uh, objectives right now. Uh, uh, Jonathan, very quickly, we're almost done, but um, uh, anything else to watch for in the next four years uh, after this council is elected and, and the mayor... Uh, the mayor's job is clear? Well, there are going to be new financial pressures because we've got this uh, 56 or $70 million uh, infrastructure deficit that we, we haven't been paying for, and people are really sort of pushing that, and a lot of, a lot of challengers have pushed for that. We're also probably going to be seeing less money coming from the province for different things, so that's going to create new pre pressures for what we've expected. Okay. We're building more roads. We want to plow them. The other thing I want to see is, like, is there anybody outside of council who's maybe going to step up as a civic leader who might wind up for a mayoral race? You know, I think someone like the Reverend Anthony Bailey from Parkdale United. It's very community or, uh, organized, yeah. All right. Uh, Jonathan, Steve, Sue, thank you for joining us. Sue, I hope your, uh, your uh, wrist mends quickly. I appreciate you joining <laughs> us on the show today. I don't think quickly it's happening. Yeah. All but right. it's better for the, city, the roads mm -hmm. of Ottawa. So. Yeah. Thank you all for being part of it. We'll be watching on Monday night starting at 8 o'clock. Hope you can join us for our live coverage here on Rogers TV and on 1310 News. We'll talk to you then.